Look up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a, no wait, it's a panther or maybe some kind of horse or a bear. It appears to be a crime fighting professor who has mastered the mystic art of shape shifting by unlocking the secrets of evolution between species. Yep, that's what that is. Hi, I'm Dan Larson and this is the history of Manimal. Animal was an eight episode live action television series that aired from September to December of 1983. It represents the point at which American television viewers drew a line in the sand for creator Glenn A. Larson refusing to follow him any further into the realm of the absurd. Manimal is the story of Dr. Jonathan Chase, who, as a boy, traveled around the world with his ever-curious missionary father. On one such occasion, they found themselves deep in the uncolonized areas of the African continent. His father managed to stumble into the competitive and dangerous world of ancient magics, rituals, and other spooky plot devices necessary to legitimize the wafer-thin plausibility of the show's core premise. See. Just before he was murdered by rival mystic artisans, Jonathan's father did two things. One, he turned into a hawk instead of straight up dying as a human, and two, he presumably transferred his legacy to Jonathan, that legacy consisting of his compassion and his ability to turn into animals at will. Jonathan spent years studying and mastering the art of human-animal or man-animal transformation, seeing the world through an anamorphic lens, breaking down the barriers between understood sciences like biology, chemistry, physics, zoology, ornithology, herpetology, paleontology, horsistry, bearology, pantheronomy. You know where you go to learn pantheronomy? Pantherona you. <laughs> Jonathan Chase can change into any animal, any size, any shape, any order, any phylum, absolutely thumbing his nose at concepts like conservation of mass, maximum animals, or minimum animals. Where the Hulk or Wolfman would tear through their clothes during transformation, Jonathan Chase just has clothes, or he doesn't. Such is the nature of the ancient and mystic art of anamorphization. Anamorphization. Jonathan decides to use his shape-shifting powers for good as a crime-fighting partner of the police department. He's ready to help whenever the crime veers toward animal control's jurisdiction or when the circumstances require the delicate touch of a panther, the careful persuasion of a rattlesnake, the eagle eyes of a hawk. This is for the drill, right? Yes. But I'm actually gonna kill these birds for real. Jonathan Chase isn't alone in his fight against crime. His buddy Ty Earl and Detective Brooke McKenzie also know his secret. They help him unleash his vigilantism where it is most effective, cleaning up any mess he leaves behind, asking him if he is a good boy, and then reassuring him that he is. The minimal purists are gonna be pissed at that one. <laughs> Did you just imply that he shits when he's a panther? <laughs> The early 80s were a transformative time, if not for actual societal issues, which there were, then for the types of entertainment that were being consumed, which they were. The Incredible Hulk aired from 1978 to 1982, and American Werewolf in London hit theaters in 1981. Michael Jackson's thriller video turned music videos and MTV into legitimate media in 1983. Creator, writer, producer Glenn Larson was never one to shy away from capitalizing on a trend. Glenn says the idea for Manimal came from co-creator Donald Boyle. NBC was looking for shows, Donald Boyle had an idea. NBC set Donald to Glenn, Don pitched it like this, probably. He's a mammal, he's an animal, he's a mammal animal. Glenn said, let's do it. Glenn A. Larson was a proven hit maker on television in 1983. His portfolio already included McCloud, Quincy, Battlestar Galactica, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, BJ and the Bear, Knight Rider, The Fall Guy, Magnum P.I. Heck, Auto Man and Masquerade were both shooting at the same time as Manimal. As a science fiction crime drama, a substantial part of the show's initial budget went toward creating the visual effects that would not only be integral to telling the story, but also enticing viewers to watch, just for stark, in-your-face graphic horror of the transformations. Academy Award-winning visual effects artist Stan Winston created the initial scenes of Man to Panther and Man to Hawk. Considering the complexity of the models and the budget invested in them for the pilot, those two animals, those two sequences, became staples of Jonathan Chase's crime-fighting toolbox. Nearly all of the other morphs would be handled off-screen, the horrible details left to your imagination. 
Stan, of course, would build on his animal experience and ultimately win four Academy Awards on films like Terminator, Aliens, Predator, Edward Scissorhands, Jurassic Park, and Iron Man. Dr. Jonathan Chase, the guy never actually referred to as Manimal, was played by Simon McCorkendale, full name Simon Charles Penderid McCorkendale, the Benedict Cumberbatch of his day, if only for name absurdity. Simon would, ironically, go on to a regular role in a show called Falcon Crest and lots of other stuff that doesn't fit the framework of that joke. He was in Nightwolf in 2010. Detective Brooke McKenzie was played by Melody Anderson, who you might know as Dale Arden from the 1980 movie Flash Gordon. Ty Earl was originally played by Glenn Turnin in the Manimal pilot, but Michael Roberts would take on the role for the rest of the series. The seven regular series episodes all opened with a quick recap for anyone that might have missed the pilot episode narrated by William Conrad. Dr. Jonathan Chase, wealthy, young, handsome, a man with the brightest of futures, a man with the darkest of pasts. From Africa's deepest recesses to the rarefied peaks of Tibet, heir to his father's legacy and the world's darkest mysteries. Jonathan Chase, master of the secrets that divide man from animal, animal from man, manimal. A warning to the people of Dallas. Bobby, looks like we got Friday night wrapped up this year. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into television. Manimo is coming. Manimo is coming. Bobby, you have it. Mama, somebody help. 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 Manimo, Fridays this fall on NBC. Not your usual rubber ducky. How do you make toys from a show like Manimal? Is it just one of those canisters filled with plastic animals? If you're Dan Larson, you make a panther, an eagle, and a snake out of construction paper, but that's just one brilliant example and hard for 20th Century Fox to make any money. In 1984, Fleetwood Toys stepped up to release officially licensed non-posable figures for Manimal. See, most toy companies looked at the problem and saw only two solutions. Figures of Jonathan Chase, mild-mannered, suit-wearing, handsome professor, or panther, hawk, snake, bear, horse. But Fleetwood Toys saw a third option, a hybrid option. It was right there in the title all along. Three action figures representing the halfway point for Jonathan Chase on his way to or from whatever animal the mission called for. One, a cobra with human arms. Two, a panther with human arms, foot, and some face parts. And three, I honestly don't know what the third one is. If you have a better picture, please internet, my nightmares aren't horrible enough. In some cases, Manimal was more popular internationally than it was in the U.S. While there were no comics or dedicated publications released in the U.S., in the U.K., a Manimal Annual was released in 1984 with exclusive stories, comics, and games based on the show. While there was one comic published by Renegade Press in 1986 called Manimal, it's a collection of stories written and illustrated by longtime prolific comic writer-artist Ernie Cologne, stories that he wrote and illustrated throughout the 70s. This Manimal is a man with animalistic tendencies, beast-like powers. It's more of a Jekyll and Hyde or Wolfman type thing. He's seeking revenge on the Nazi commandant who murdered his family. It is not canon. Don't even bother queuing up the graphic. Manimal only lasted eight episodes, including the 90-minute pilot, in the pantheon of Glenn A. Larson-produced classic 70s and 80s television shows. Its impact, its legacy, was... minimal. There is no one reason that Manimal failed to finish a single season. A far-fetched concept, lack of marquee star power, an oversaturation of police drama, both fi and sci-fi, but producer-creator Glenn Larson will tell you that it was scheduling more than anything else. The pilot, the thing that would have hooked the viewers, that would have established the character, was scheduled opposite one of the most popular television shows of all time. You might think that the only people interested in an anamorphing professor cop were watching, regardless of whatever was on any other channel at the time. And you might be right, but we'll never know for sure. Two weeks later, the one-hour regular episodes began airing. Four weeks after that, Manimal was essentially canceled, with the remaining three episodes being aired a full month later. And then it was officially canceled. Yes, the show about a man who fights crime by transforming himself into different animals has been temporarily removed from the NBC lineup and placed into that TV netherworld known as hiatus. <laughs> now its fate is in question, and join us, won't you, as we remember the past and look to the future of Manimal Show at the Crossroads.
But was that the end of Manimal? Never count out a Glenn Larson concept, especially when Glenn Larson is making the calls. In 1997, Glenn Larson created and produced a show called Nightman based on the comic book character originally created by Steve Englehart and Rick Hoberg for the Ultraverse imprint of Malibu Comics, now owned by Marvel. Nightman, for the TV show, is a saxophonist struck by weird lightning granting him the power of hearing evil thoughts in exchange for the inability to ever sleep again. Also, he has an anti-gravity belt that allows him to fly and a bulletproof suit with an enhanced goggle lens that shoots lasers. That's not really the important part. The important part is that somehow that show got a second season, and in the sixth episode of that second season titled Manimal, Dr. Jonathan Chase, Manimal has learned the secrets of time travel what? and is squaring off against Jack the Ripper in Victorian England. Glenn A. Larson crosses your line in the sand. Glenn A. Larson will never go too far into the realm of the absurd. The more absurd Glenn A. Larson gets, the stronger Glenn A. Larson becomes. Dr. Chase follows Jack the Ripper back to the 1990s where we find out the whole thing is just an attempt to set up a backdoor pilot for a new Manimal show featuring Dr. Jonathan Chase's daughter who has inherited his legacy of animality. Nightman ran for a total of 44 episodes, but even his strength wasn't enough to get Manimal back to his or her own show. Simon McCorkendale stayed busy, perhaps too busy, as he turned down the role of Captain Jonathan Archer on Star Trek Enterprise. Glenn Larson never gave up on Manimal or any of his concepts, characters, repeatedly rebooting, reimagining, and reintroducing them over the years, always with an eye toward bringing McCorkendale back. In 2006, McCorkendale was diagnosed with cancer. In 2009, he announced that the disease was terminal, and just a year later, he passed. In September of 2012, The Hollywood Reporter announced that Sony Pictures Animation had acquired the rights to a live-action slash CG reboot of Manimal with Glenn Larson attached as a producer. In 2014, Deadline reported that Jimmy Miller, Will Ferrell, and Adam McKay were also on board as producers and a script was being written by Jay Martell and Ian Roberts of Key and Peele. This was not going to be a serious drama. That said, later in 2014, Glenn Larson died of cancer as well and the project has sat dormant ever since. When Googled, results are now related to a lifestyle brand offshoot of weightlifting straps that were created in 2010, and a French death metal band who went quiet in 2012. In 2012, Manimal the Complete Series was released on DVD in the UK by Fabulous Films and in France by Condor Entertainment. Three years later, Shout Factory finally brought the entire series home to the US. Manimal is what it is. Eight episodes about a guy who transforms into animals and uses that power to fight crime. It is not high art. It was number 15 on TV Guide's worst TV shows of all time in 2002. In 2004, a British publication called Broadcast ranked Manimal at number five on their list of worst US TV exports. The ultimate encyclopedia of fantasy delivered the epitaph, quote, axed after seven regular episodes, the only surprise is that it ever got past the pilot stage, end quote. But don't blame Glenn Larson if you go in expecting anything other than what he promised you in the past. Televised science fiction storytelling that pushes the boundaries of what might make for interesting television. A crime-fighting action hero who could live his life blissfully unaware, consumed by luxury, but instead he chooses to fight crime as a panther, a hawk, a horse, a bear, a snake, a manimal. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. Speaking of subscribing to channels, we started a new second channel called Toy Galaxy 2. That's T-O-O. -O. Head over there and subscribe for stuff we don't post here. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy or become a YouTube channel member. Both Patreon and YouTube channel membership have the same exclusive content, so choose your own adventure. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if this is the first you're hearing of Manimal, or if you thought it was, like so many things, a joke the internet invented. To be clear, the internet didn't invent this joke, it just got more traction because of it. Cut. <laughs>